Hello, my dear friends. A very good evening to all of you. A very good evening to all of you, and a very very warm welcome to today's session. This session is your live session on the Mist YouTube channel, where we are going to discuss twenty five most important questions in the subject of ophthalmology for your exam on twentieth of January. A very good morning, good morning to me. Good evening to all of you. <laughs> so I hope all of you are doing well. All of you are giving your best for the preparation and to achieve your goals. So we are just four weeks, nearly four weeks away from our exam, and this is the time when we have to put in our best efforts into our preparation. so this today's session is a small effort from my side to share important questions for you so that you are able to revise all the important topics for your exam which are there in ophthalmology okay so guys are you all set to start today's session and uh, and i uh, yeah perfect so and i wish you to be like you know interactive in a way try to let's do the questions together it's a preparation session beta if you don't get a thing correct don't get disheartened okay so this is we are going to now revise the important topic so that you know how to attempt the questions so in today's session the aim of the session is to make you know the important topics to make you know that how to attempt the different type of the questions whether they are clinical case scenario questions whether they are image based questions how to reduce the number of the mistakes which we do so this is we are all going to do together okay so let's start so let's start now before starting the questions as such i want to spend a minute here because you have you guys have been asking about the topics for the exam i have put up a list of the topics in ophthalmology which you must go through before your exam okay so this is the li a list of the topics beta vkc vernal keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis and the giant papillary conjunctivitis this is one where you can get a image based question or case uh, clinical case in a scenario question then a very favorite topic by the examiner zero ophthalmia or the vitamin a deficiency signs in eye then the question can come from the topic of pterygium infective corneal ulcer keratoconus so these are few topics in cornea okay then in the chapter of cataract please revise congenital cataract what is complicated cataract cataract surgery in the past few exams the question based upon cataract surgery have been coming in the exam and after cataract management then in the chapter of glaucoma please go through congenital glaucoma acute angle closure glaucoma tests in which we do in glaucoma and anti glaucoma drugs beta okay then in uveitis please go through anterior uveitis and the sympathetic ophthalmitis another favorite topic with the examiners for ophthalmology then coming to your retina chapters central retinal vein occlusion central retinal artery occlusions they are important topics diabetic retinopathy based questions they have been coming in exam please go through retinal detachment okay and then all time favorite of examiners retinoblastoma so please do the retinoblastoma very thoroughly then you can get a question based upon the nerve palsies especially third and sixth nerve palsy go through amblyopia treatment then very very important one question will always be there in the exam almost always visual field defects okay and with that please do the pupil abnormal pupil reactions also okay then management of congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction another simple but important topic question can come based upon orbital floor fracture blunt trauma to the eye so please go through that then foreign bodies ocular foreign bodies whether they are superficial or intraocular question can come based upon that and then 
refractive errors and the glass prescription. And last but not the least, the question based upon the refractive surgery, especially LASIK. Okay, so this is a list of the topics which you must go through. And most of these topics we have repeatedly done, whether it is your test discussions or otherwise uh, the question revisions in the revision classes, I have always highlighted the main topics. Okay, beta. So you will get this list, of course, as a part of the PDF here. And now let's begin our session. Let's begin our session. And I'm going to start with the first question in today's session. So uh, today's session will be approximately two hours. It all depends how you guys are doing. Okay, <laughs> right. So Bita, whenever you are attempting any question, especially in ophthalmology, I always tell, please spend 10 extra seconds on reading the statement carefully. Because it is mostly in the statement your answer is. You have to look for the keywords which will help you to clinch the right answer. Okay. So in a clinical case scenario questions, what are you going to look at? Look at the age group of the patient. Okay. Look at the symptoms which are being given. Okay? What kind of examination findings are given in the question statement? If there is an image, try to identify the image. And then, of course, the last line of your question will be what examiner is actually asking. So whether it is asking the question is based upon to find the diagnosis or to base upon find the management. So you have to see that. So these are the few steps which should become a reflex in, uh, in you whenever you are attempting a clinical case question. Look at the age, look at the symptoms, keywords in the signs. Look at the any image which is given. Try to identify the image. You will get your answer with that. Okay? Right? So, what is the first question here? The first question here is, there is an elderly patient, 65-year-old patient who comes to IOPD. What are the symptoms? Decreased vision for distance. He cannot look far clearly. But he can read newspaper without glasses. So, the near vision is normal. Far vision is decreased. Near vision is normal. On slit lamp examination, the following image is seen. So there, there is an image which has been given to you to make the diagnosis. What is the reason for his condition? Now, in a 65-year-old patient, beta, what will you expect? Normally, will he be able to read without glasses? No, because this is an age group where you need near glasses for reading because you become press biopic. But here, patient is now able to read the newspaper. It means some kind of refractive change has occurred in the eye. Okay, So that's what they are asking. That what is the reason for this condition? Now, looking at the image, let's see. Let's see what do you see in the image here. What do you see in the image here, beta? In slit lamp image also, I have always told you to go step by. First of all, see externally. Is there any redness? No. Then your cornea is clear. You do not see anything abnormal in the cornea. Your iris is appearing normal. And then comes your lens shadow. So this is your lens slit which you are seeing. Now, is this lens clear, beta? Normally, the lens should be clear. No, this lens is not clear. This lens is appearing yellowish. This lens is appearing yellowish. Why it is appearing yellowish? Because of the cataract. And what type of cataract is there in which the lens becomes yellowish brown? Nuclear sclerosis. Because the nucleus has, there has been protein changes in the nucleus. The nucleus has undergone nuclear sclerosis becoming yellowish brown. Okay, right? So, what is the diagnosis? So what, what your image, what did you get from the image? What you have got from the image is nuclear sclerosis. Okay, beta, all of you are clear that the image, slit lamp image was of nuclear sclerosis, which is a type of cataract. What happens in this type of cataract? There is increased refractive index of the lens there is increased refractive index of the lens 
due to change in the lens proteins. The normal crystalline proteins, they become crystalloid. So refractive index increases. So when the refractive index of the lens increases, the converging power of the lens increases. Converging power of the lens and of course the eye increases. So when converging power increases, it is called as index myopia. Remember, beta, we have done in the classes, you know this. It is called index myopia. The eye has become myopic due to increase in the refractive index of the lens. So because of this reason, the patient is able to see near clearly without the use of any glasses. So this is also known as very commonly in kind of layman language, it is known as second sight of old age. Remember, it is called as second sight of old age that you are able, you are again able to see near clearly. Okay. So with this explanation, you have got your answer. If you know slit lamp is telling about nuclear sclerosis, then you know that patient is able to read without glasses. It means patient has got second sight of old age, which is due to index myopia. Right? So this is your answer. This is your answer. So what is the choice here? What is the reason for this condition? The choice A is your answer. Index myopia due to nuclear sclerosis. Okay? Rest of the choices, there is nothing like index hypermetropia. It is not positional myopia. Positional myopia, when there is change in the position of the lens. For example, lens subluxation. So you don't see that here. Curvatural myopia, when there is increased curvature in the uh, uh, curvature of the lens. So here again, there is no change in the curvature of the lens. So the answer is clear. So this is a conceptual question. And it can come in a different way whether they just ask about index myopia or they ask about nuclear sclerosis, now you know nuclear sclerosis, index myopia, and you also know how nuclear sclerosis looks on the slit lamp image. TK Beta, all of you agree with me? All of you are satisfied with this? Okay. A simple question, simple concept. If it comes your exam, uh, in your exam, you should not go wrong, Beta. Right? Okay. Moving on to your next question. Moving on to your next question. What are the yoke muscles for the movement shown in the given image? Again, the question based upon the extraocular muscles has been coming very often. So that's an important topic and expected topic for your exam. Now, these questions, again, no need to get confused. No need to get confused. First of all, you should be knowing what, what, what do you mean by yoke muscle beta. When we talk about yoke muscles, it means we are talking about the muscles in both eyes. So one muscle in both eyes, that pair makes the yoke muscles. Okay. And then you have to see that which movement they are talking about. Which movement they are talking about. Okay. So here, here in this case, let me show you the picture. So again, don't. In these kind of questions, I will rather suggest do not go to the choices because if you read choices, you will get confused. First of all, make your own answer and then find that answer in the choices. beta. Okay. So here, first of all, which movement is this? Can you identify this movement? This is your left eye of the patient. This is the right eye of the patient. Which movement is this? beta? This is, the patient is looking on this side. So this is levo elevation. Patient is looking on left side and up. Agree, beta? Patient is looking levo elevation, left and up. Now, in these cases, on the same side of the movement, that is on the left side, there will be rectus muscle which will be acting. On the same side, rectus muscle will be acting. Okay. So which, which rectus muscle keep, uh, takes the eye upwards? Superior rectus. Superior rectus takes the eye upward. Okay. So 
the you identify the muscle in the left eye agree beta you have identified the muscle in the left eye which is the muscle left superior rectus ye identify ho gaya na right and i have always told you how to find the other muscle make how to find the other muscle the left will become right superior will become inferior and rectus will become oblique so that is your combination so these are the two yoke muscles beta left superior rectus right inferior oblique for levo elevation so this is the way you will be doing this question okay simplest way don't go to the choices you will get confused first make your own answer and then match the choice from there the same side if it is levo elevation the same side rectus will be uh, acting so le uh, left rectus elevation ke liye kaun sa rectus chahiye superior rectus so it is left superior rectus so when you have got the left superior rectus you can identify the yoke muscle in the other eye yes exactly okay right so which is the choice here beta which is the choice here which matches with this combination left superior rectus right inferior oblique very nicely most of you have told me choice c choice c so if there is any question based upon yoke muscles i'm sure you are going to do it right okay fine supposedly supposedly just for an example just for an example uh if it is right or i should write rather right supposedly it is dextro depression the movement is showing dextro depression let's do another example so that we know this part very clearly supposedly the movement is dextro depression and you have to find yoke muscles beta and you have to find yoke muscle so dextro means right depression means down so it means which muscle will be used on the right side on the right side you will be using right side rectus will be used which rectus takes the eye down inferior rectus agree beta which which rectus takes the eye down inferior rectus and which will be the yoke muscle for this one left superior oblique left superior oblique so this will be your pair of yoke muscles if the question is for example about dextro depression theek hai beta so good so simple simple jitna simple understanding ko aap rakhoge beta keep your concept simple never over complicate this is the time to avoid complications in the concept go through the straight simple things so that we commit less mistakes less confusion on the exam day about such questions perfect perfect i'm so happy for you just using this time to uh, give you a concept of the synergist muscle also what we just spoke was about the yoke muscles yoke muscles mean pair of muscle in each eye and then sometimes the question can be based upon what is known as synergist muscle beta synergist muscle so what is synergist muscle synergist muscle we are talking about muscle in the same eye so i hope all of you remember synergist muscle means the muscle in the same eye which is doing same action same eye same action the muscles synergist muscles are which are in the same eye doing same action so for example for example if the eye if we are talking about the upward elevation or upward action so synergist muscles will be in the same eye superior rectus and inferior oblique will be the synergist muscle right for downward movement inferior rectus and superior oblique will be the synergist muscle for abduction abduction lateral rectus and obliques will be the synergist muscle theek hai beta right so synergist muscle same eye same action 
yoke muscle a pair of the muscles in the two eye taking the eye to the same direction and yes very nicely jimmy is uh, revising with us the nerve supply lr6 so4 o3 okay so any question based upon extra ocular muscle movement which is one of the important topics please keep this concept in mind and mark it right bachche fine perfect so is it time to go forward okay coming on to your next question beta coming on to your next question on examination of a patient his pupils do not constrict on shining a torch light to the eye so again look at the things which are important pupils do not constrict on shining the torch light to the eye normally kya hona chahiye beta normally whenever you shine a torch light to the eye because of the light reflex because of the light reflex the pupil should constrict it means in this condition light reflex is absent pupils are not constricting okay but constrict when he looks at a pencil which is held near his face so what is happening when something when you look at near your near reflex comes into play your eye accommodates and the pupil again constrict it means in this patient near reflex is present near reflex is present so near reflex is also called as accommodation reflex so what kind of abnormality is this what kind of abnormality is this in which light reflex is absent near reflex is present we are talking about ar pupil theek hai na beta we are talking about argel robertson pupil accommodation reflex present so what is the reason what is the most like likely reason of the choices given horner syndrome crao neurosyphilis papilledema ar pupil out of these choices is seen in neurosyphilis so all of you i'm so happy all of you are correct it is your neurosyphilis which can cause what one of the causes of ar pupil so what is happening just for your understanding here in case of ar pupil or argel robertson pupil pupil they are small in size they are myotic and irregular but they do not react to light but they react briskly to accommodation accommodation reflex present an easy way to remember arp accommodation reflex present so that is ar pupil which is seen in neurosyphilis another reason for the uh, ar pupil common one even can be seen in diabetic patients beta this can also be seen in diabetic patients okay now coming to the other choices in horner syndrome horner syndrome mein kya hota hai beta there is dilation lag because it is the sympathetic system which is uh, affected so in horner you will see a dilation lag what kind of what kind of uh, abnormality you will see in central retinal artery occlusion yes that's what i am coming to dr fusion that is your marcus gun pupil which is called relative afferent pupillary defect relative afferent pupillary defect will be seen in central retinal artery occlusion okay whereas in papilledema the pupil reactions they are normal in the early stages so out of these choices neurosyphilis is your answer right okay right okay beta moving on to the next question here moving on to the next question here yeah okay the dye shown in the image now this is an image based question the dye shown in the image can be used for all of the following except now these questions again i always keep repeating do not leave the word except because the meaning of the question changes if you miss out the word except 
So here you have to first of all, based upon the image, identify the dye. Uh, Dr. Alam, you are talking about the option two in the previous question. In the previous question, the option two was a CRAO, central retinal artery occlusion. In central retinal artery occlusion, you will see RAPT or Marcus gun pupil. Okay, you will see RAPD or Marcus gun pupil. Okay, so now I am coming, uh, I am at question number four, beta. So here, first of all, identify which dye is this, which dye is this. So this picture, again, most of you must have seen multiple number of times. So first of all, you can identify that you are looking at this picture in a blue light. Blue light, which is there because of the use of the cobalt blue filter. You are using cobalt blue filter on the slit lamp so that you are viewing the eye in the blue light. Okay. And you see, you can see some green staining, green staining on the surface of the cornea. This staining is because of fluorescent dye. This staining is because of fluorescent dye. Sodium fluorescent dye. Okay. So this again is can be your question. They can ask you that sodium fluorescent dye, which light is used? To examine the eye, cobalt blue filter, which gives blue light. Okay, So you have identified the dye and let's go back to the question. They say that this dye can be used for all of the following except. Let's do the choices. Corneal ulcer examination. Yes, that is true because fluorescent dye will stain the area of the epithelial ulcer. So wherever corneal epithelial cells are absent due to ulceration or due to aberration, fluorescent dye will stain that. Okay. Lens capsule staining. So this is false beta. Lens capsule staining is not done with sodium fluorescent dye. Okay. Dry eye diagnosis. Yes, fluorescent dye is one of the dyes which is used for dry eye diagnosis. The other dyes which are used for dry eye diagnosis, beta, any one of you? The other are dyes, so lysamine green, lysamine green and rose bengal. These are the two other dyes which are used for dry eye. Okay, So all three, fluorescent, lysamine green and rose bengal, they can be used for the diagnosis and staging, grading of the dry eye. Then this eye is also, this dye is also used in Goldman applination tonometry. Goldman applination tonometry. Remember? Remember, beta? Just to make you revise, this is your Goldman applination tonometer. And the Goldman applination tonometer is used to measure intraocular pressure. And in this case also, you apply fluorescent dye to the eye and you check the eye pressure by using this instrument. So again, in this method also, fluorescent dye is used. This is to check the intraocular pressure beta. Okay, right? Uh, yes, that is a gold standard test for checking intraocular pressure. Very nice. So this is another example of using fluorescent dye for the corneal ulcer. So here you can see you're looking at a dendritic ulcer which has been beautifully stained by using the fluorescent dye. So fluorescent dye helps you to stain the corneal ulcers, corneal aberration for the dry eye diagnosis and staging as well as it is also used for tonometry, right? So your odd one out, your right answer here is lens capsule staining. That is not where we use fluorescent dye. For lens capsule staining, for lens capsule staining, which is a part of the cataract surgery, the dye which is used is trepan blue beta. 
for lens capsule staining the dye which is used is trepan blue so this can be another important point uh no here it is no dry eye in the dendritic culture because it's a redness that's the redness of the eye okay dr shubham so lens capsule staining we use the trepan blue dye okay dear friends right fine moving on to your next question beta moving on to your next question a patient yes dr 50 you are right you can use perkin tonometer which is hand held and you can also use tono pen because both of these instruments can be held in your hand okay because it is difficult to make a child small child sit on the slit lamp and check the eye pressure so you can use the hand held yeah methylene blue or terpen uh, trepan blue uh, the, they are one and the same thing beta okay right okay guys coming on to your next question a patient has lost left side of visual field in both eyes what is the site of the lesion patient has used beta please read the question carefully left side of the visual field on both eyes first of all don't jump on the answer first of all identify the visual field defect yes it is hemianopia dr mayank but what kind of hemianopia what kind of hemianopia so please have a look here so before jumping to the answer first of all complete your diagnosis so let's see what visual field the examiner is talking about okay so this is your right eye this is your left eye if you divide the visual field into two half left side of visual field on both eyes it means this is the left side of visual field in the right eye this is the left side of the visual field in the left eye so what is this beta this is this is left sided left sided homonymous homonymous hemianopia okay this is left sided homonymous hemianopia and some of you are very rightly saying if the homonymous hemianopia is left sided first of all homonymous hemianopia will be seen in the lesions of optic tract okay so it will be seen in the lesions of optic tract and the site of the lesion will be contralateral okay so most of you are telling me correct the site of the lesion will be contralateral to this one so if it is left sided homonymous hemianopia the lesion will be on the right optic tract so your answer is right optic tract theek hai beta so again in visual field questions i know you have done it many times but do not jump to the answer please first of all identify the field defect examiner can write clearly also that the patient is having left sided homonymous hemianopia but they can give you a kind of a indirect this thing left side of visual field in both eyes so you have to identify left sided homonymous hemianopia if macula sparing is mentioned then you talk about occipital cortex but if there is no macula sparing mentioned then it is optic tract lesion theek hai so whatever question comes whether it comes optic tract or it comes occipital cortex beta if your concept is clear you will not be making it wrong fine in optic chiasma the lesion is on the opposite side of the in the two eye because it is bitemporal hemianopia optic nerve lesions they will cause visual defect only on in one eye theek hai na beta right so here a quick revision for your visual field defect so one by one one by one beta 
So this kind of visual field defect when the lesion is only in the one eye and in the central field. So this will be seen in the macula lesions. Right? The second one, when the visual field is gone again only on the one side, one eye. Visual field gone only on one eye. So this kind of the lesion will be seen in optic nerve lesions. Then third one, when temporal half on both sides is gone, temporal half on both sides is gone, this is bitemporal hemianopia, which will be seen in optic chiasma. Agree, bache? Then when same side, here again left side on both eyes, left half on both eyes is gone. So homonymous hemianopia, so lesion is in optic tract. And in this case, the lesion again will be in the right optic tract because it is contralateral homonymous hemianopia. When the lesion is pi in the sky, pi in the sky, then it is your temporal lobe. Again, it is on contralateral side. In this case, it is the right temporal lobe lesion. When the lesion is pi on the floor, this is your parietal lobe, again contralateral. Here, the right parietal lobe is gone. And when the lesion is homonymous hemianopia, but macula sparing, then the site of the lesion is contralateral optic cortex. Contralateral occipital cortex. Okay. Again, beta, spending five minutes on this concept can make you mark correct answer for this in the exam. Okay, Before your exam, please go through this visual field once, then it will be there. Craniopharyngioma, beta, is a pituitary tumor. Okay, Craniopharyngioma, Dr. Fusion, is a pituitary tumor like a pituitary adenoma. So that will compress optic chiasma. And that will cause bitemporal hemianopia. Okay, right? So, this will be most of the time nowadays examiners are putting questions like this. Left side of the visual field. Left side of the visual field in left eye and right side of the visual field in right eye. So, what will be that? left side of the visual field in left eye and right side of the visual field in right eye. That is bitemporal hemianopia. Okay. Keyhole lesion is beta seen in the lateral geniculate body lesions. Lateral geniculate body. Okay. Right. Fine, Bache. So this is the time now to move on to another question. Again, a very simple question often asked in the exam. Bache, come to the next question now. The given sign is seen in which of the following conditions? Again, image-based question, a spot diagnosis. Image-based question, a spot diagnosis. Tell me, Beta. Tell me what you are seeing here. What you are looking at the picture here, you are seeing a whitish colored lesion which is showing a foamy appearance on the bulbar conjectiva on the temporal side. And if some of you can make it, you also can make it out that the conjectival surface is appearing very dry. So there is conjectival xerosis also. So this is your bited spot. Again, never forget this image beta. Bited spot, white foamy spot. So this is bited spot. And which condition in which bited spot is seen out of the choices? Very nice. Most of you, it is your, rather all of you so happy. It is zero ophthalmia. Zero ophthalmia is a condition, the group of the signs which are seen in the eye because of vitamin A deficiency. Because of vitamin A deficiency. So question can come, they can ask you which vitamin is deficient. You can, they can ask about the bitted spot. 
so any way question can come so please remember very simple question vkc vernal keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis is your spring catarrh you see giant papillae there you see horner tranta spot there okay congenital glaucoma the whole eye is large size there is large sized cornea wilson's disease you see kf ring so this is a simple bitted spot okay right so please remember the who classification of vitamin a deficiency signs in eye which is under the heading of zero ophthalmia first symptom which patient will have is night blindness first sign which you will see on the eye is conjunctival xerosis that is extreme dryness of the conjunctiva then bitted spot followed by corneal xerosis then there will be keratomalacia or corneal ulceration and the stage of corneal scarring and the changes which you see in the fundus they are in the form of pigmentary changes which is called as xerophthalmic fundus theek hai bachche so simple question very simple question please do not forget this moving on to your next question beta here which is again most of these questions you see even when there is a case statement there is a very simple answer to that so never get scared by a long case statement that consumes time so you should be ready practicing how to read the long statement questions not missing any important point but they are time consuming so you have to make sure that you practice these theek hai bachche right now 8 year old boy so age group is 8 year old brought to the i opd for difficulty in vision for distance okay if the patient is having some difficulty of vision in distance with spectacle correction that is with the glasses correction the visual acuity improves to 6 by 6 in the right eye so refractive error is nicely corrected in the right eye but 6 by 12 in the left eye so 6 by 12 is not the normal level of the vision it means left eye does not improve completely by spectacle correction right anterior segment fundus are both normal so then what is the next step in the management so first of all if you have to know the management it means you have to know the diagnosis so what is the diagnosis here beta when i there is no organic abnormality in the eye because anterior segment and fundus examination are normal but still vision is not improving in one eye so most of you are absolutely correct it is a case of amblyopia it is a case of amblyopia okay and after correcting the cause of amblyopia because amblyopia can be because of refractive error and isometropia it can be because of strabismus it can be because of cataract so once you have corrected that cause again the vision may not improve completely so you have to go for the treatment of choice which is very nicely most of you are telling me occlusion therapy occlusion therapy means you patch the normal eye you patch the normal eye so that the eye which is lazy which is in which the vision is suppressed that becomes stimulated theek hai beta so to stimulate the lazy eye you patch the normal eye so here in this question you have rightly made the diagnosis of amblyopia so the next step in the management is to go through occlusion therapy observation is not indicated because then the vision will remain permanently suppressed spectacle correction or contact lens prescription they are going to do this almost the same thing so occlusion therapy has to be added this is not the age group for refractive surgery so right answer is occlusion therapy theek hai beta bar <laughs> yes that's right okay beta moving on to the next question a patient presents in eye emergency with episodes of transient blurring of the vision so most of the question you uh, must be noting they come with a 
image as well as a clinical case scenario. So spot image based diagnosis question in the ophthalmology, they will be less because most of them will be associated with some clinical history also to help you in the diagnosis. Now let's do this question. So what is this patient is having? This patient is having episodes of transient blurring of vision. Now, this is very important beta, transient blurring of vision. So, what do we mean by transient blurring of vision? The patient has blurred vision for some time. It can be for few seconds to few minutes. And then vision becomes normal. On examination, pupil reactions are normal. And following fundus findings are seen. What is the diagnosis? So you have to make diagnosis. So what is the other name given for episodes of transient blurring of vision? That is called amaurosis fugax. Amaurosis fugax. Right? So amaurosis fugax means that the patient has transient blurring of vision. So what is patient is having? Amaurosis fugax. Pupil reaction are normal and this is the fundus image. This is the fundus image. So what are you noticing in this fundus image beta? Again, if you remember what I have always told you, when you look at a fundus image, first of all, look at the optic disc. Look at the optic disc beta. Is this optic disc normal? No, because you are noticing the margins of the optic disc are blurred. So there is optic disc swelling. The disc is appearing more red, what we call as disc hyperemia. You can even see the hemorrhages on the disc. Okay, macula is normal, but the optic disc is hyperemic, swollen, and you can see the hemorrhages. So this, this fundus is showing bilateral disc edema. This fundus is showing bilateral disc edema. Now, whether this is due to inflammation or due to the other reason, that we have to see, okay? Now, in inflammation, the pupil reaction will not be normal. There will be RAPD. So, what is the condition in which there is bilateral disc edema, but pupil reactions are normal? So, now you have to compile everything. Patient is having amaurosis fugax normal pupil reaction, normal pupil reaction, bilateral disc edema. Okay, so all this will be seen in papilledema beta, papilledema, which is disc edema due to raised intra cranial pressure or raised intracranial tension. Okay? In papillitis or in optic nerve inflammation, the vision will be consistently decreased. Okay, It will be consistently decreased. Pupil reaction will be RAPD in the cases of or Marcus gun pupil in the cases of optic neuritis. Okay? In papilledema, the disc edema is a passive edema because of the raised intracranial pressure. So in the beginning, it's only amaurosis fugax. The pupil reactions are normal. So that's the difference. And another important thing, remember there will be enlarged blind spot. If you do visual field in these patients, there will be enlarged blind spots. Right? So, with this explanation, are you now able to make the right choice? So, papilledema is the right answer here. Beta. In papillitis, the vision will be consistently decreased. There will be Marcus gun pupil. In hypertensive retinopathy, the blood vessel changes will be there. There will be not only disc edema in grade 4, there will be retinal hemorrhages also. In optic atrophy, the disc, they are not reddish and swollen. They are pale. They are pale because that is a degenerative condition. Okay. And Dr. 56 is telling us the treatment of papilledema is the treatment of the cause of the papilledema, which is absolutely right. Yes, guys, you will be getting the PDF after the session. The, the, the MIST team will be sharing the PDF with you. Okay, beta?
right moving on to the next question very simple question based upon diabetic retinopathy which of the following is not seen in the cases of npdr now here bachche intentionally i have used the abbreviation because sometimes we have seen the examiner using the abbreviation which which is not ideal but since it is a standard abbreviation so sometimes they may use that so what is npdr npdr is non proliferative diabetic retinopathy what is npdr non proliferative diabetic retinopathy theek hai so what is not seen again never jump on the choices beta without reading the statement clear, uh, clearly in the exam theek hai yahan pe abhi hum bahut cautious ho ke answer kar dete hain exam mein mind confuse hota hai because it's not only ophthalmology there are question based upon all the subjects coming randomly so not seen ko miss nahi karna agar wo statement mein likha hua hai to fine bacha so what is not seen microaneurysm they are seen retinal hemorrhages flame shape dot and blot they are seen retinal neovascularization once it is neovascularization that becomes stage of proliferative diabetic retinopathy so that is not a feature of npdr which is my answer retinal edema in the form of diabetic macular edema can be seen in npdr or pdr and very right dr choudhury microaneurysms are the earliest and hallmark sign of the diabetic retinopathy theek hai not really dr fusion for this exam it's not nearly necessary because questions are now coming more based upon uh, the clinical things rather than the in which layer this is found theek hai beta right now if you have to look at the fundus image let's revise quickly the npdr fundus image so what you are noticing here you are you will be able to see small red dots which are your microaneurysms you should be able to see these yellow dots which are your hard exudates the dot and blot red hemorrhages the flame shaped hemorrhages the cotton wool spot here within the hemorrhage so all these signs are seen in the non proliferative diabetic retinopathy stage okay and in the proliferative diabetic retinopathy stage as you are seeing here you will see frond of the new vessels either on the disc when it is called neovascularization of the disc or on the surface of the retina elsewhere when it is called neovascularization elsewhere okay so here it is your nvd and nve which you are seeing here and this is the stage of proliferative diabetic retinopathy theek hai beta and the treatment of proliferative diabetic retinopathy is pan retinal photocoagulation laser whereas in npdr you will make the patient have good control of the blood sugar as well as frequent checkups so that in case it progresses to pdr stage then you will do the treatment and for diabetic macular edema you will do either the focal or grid laser or you can give anti vegf treatment also theek hai beta right perfect so this was all about diabetic retinopathy let's move on to the next question bachche let's move on to the next question a 30 year old lady presents with fever eye pain decrease in vision and proptosis in the left eye so again a clinical case question giving you a multiple symptoms which are there relatively younger lady fever eye pain decrease in vision proptosis in the left eye so it is a painful proptosis beta painful proptosis with decrease in the vision with fever there is a history of recurrent sinusitis beta jahan pe sinus involve ho gayi aur eye related question hai iska matlab kuch na kuch infection gadbad chal raha hai theek hai the sinuses they because of the proximity to the orbit the infection spreads from the sinus to the orbit 
So what is the probable diagnosis here? Is it acute decro Cystitis, decrocystitis means lacrimal sac infection. In lacrimal sac infection, there will not be proptosis. There will be swelling in the sac area. And the lacrimal sac area is on the medial side. Okay. Is it blephritis? So this is not my answer. Is it blephritis? Blephritis is only lid infection. Lid inflammation. So vision should not be compromised in blephritis. The vision should be normal. So this is not the answer. Is it hordolium internum? What is hordolium internum, guys? Hordolium internum is nothing but your infected clasion. Again, in infected clasion, there can be pain. There will be lid swelling, but no decrease in vision or proptosis. So your answer is, as all of you are telling me, or vital cellulitis, or vital cellulitis. So infection comes from the sinus and it involves the soft tissues of the eyeball leading to an ocular emergency. This is an ocular emergency. So this will be the clinical picture. You see there is proptosis. There is marked lid swelling. The eye becomes sort of frozen. The extraocular movements are restricted. And because of the compression on the optic nerve, there will be decrease in the vision. There will be a marcus and pupil. And these are the signs which tell us that this patient is having proptosis due to orbital cellulitis. These patients are hospitalized. These patients are given intravenous antibiotics because if we don't treat them on time, the complications they can lead to Infection spreading to the brain, cavernous sinus thrombosis, which can be even fatal. Okay, beta? Right? No, not really in this case, beta. Okay, guys, just doing questions, questions, questions is a lot of hard work, isn't it? Right? So, you, what you have been doing for so many months, some of you for even like, you know, years putting a lot of hard work and maybe wondering that where is it taking me? So just an assurance to all of you, hard work never goes waste. Okay, so as I told you in the beginning, we are just nearly four weeks away from the exam. That is your Lakshya Vita. That is your aim. And whatever hard work you are putting, whatever number of hours you are putting, whatever sleep you are sacrificing, whatever... Like, you know, the enjoyment you are sacrificing, that will never go waste. Okay, uh, Which kind of uh, hordolium and uh, clasion? But a sty, Dr. Bansal, uh, sty will be on the lid margin. Okay, and it is painful. Clasion is away from the lid margin and it is painless. But when clasion become infected, then it is called hordolium internum. Sty is called hordolium externum. No, here bleeding is not bleeding. This is in infection. Orbital cellulitis is an in purulent inflammation or infection. Okay. Yes, pass hona hai. Or uh, <laughs> as Dr. Dhawan has told you, pass hone ke bahut hi kareeb hai yaan. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Just be into that momentum. Don't lose your momentum before the exam, bache. And let's not uh, lose our momentum in today's session. And let's move forward to the next question. Okay, bache? Okay, another clinical case scenario. Come on, guys. 48-year-old hypermetropic patient. 48-year-old hypermetropic patient. So everything has a relevance. Hypermetropic means patient is having smaller eyeball. Remember, hypermetropic patients, they have got small axial lens. Presents in eye OPD with the history of colored halos. Intermittent attacks of eye pain. The last episode occurred while she was watching a movie in the theater. What is the next step in the management of this case? Again, before the management, you have to make a diagnosis. Okay. So what is your diagnosis? First of all, beta. A patient who is having colored halos, intermittent attacks of eye pain. If you remember, there are only three, three there are only. 
थ्री डी डीज ऑफ कलर्ड हेलो थ्री डी डीज ऑफ कलर्ड हेलो वट आर थ्री डी डीज ऑफ कलर्ड हेलो म्यूकोपुरुलेंट कंजेक्टेवाइटस म्यूकोपुरुलेंट कंजेक्टेवाइटस देर इज अर्ली कैटरैक्ट एंड एक्यूट एंगल क्लोजर ग्लकोमा ठीक है ऑब्वियसली म्यूकोपुरुलेंट कंजेक्टेवाइटिस में अटैक्स ऑफ आई पेन इज नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड अर्ली कैटरैक्ट अटैक्स ऑफ आई पेन इज नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड सो ओनली कंडीशन विद कलर्ड हेलोज अलॉन्ग विद अटैक्स ऑफ आई पेन इज योर एक्यूट कंजेस्टिव ग्लकोमा और एक्यूट एंगल क्लोजर ग्लकोमा okay and what is the relevance of hypermetropic patient because these patients they have small eyeball the angles they are expected to be narrow or closed in hypermetropic patient so in patients who have narrow angles whenever pupil dilates these patients they can have an attack of A C G, angle closure glaucoma. Because when pupil dilates, for example, when they are in a movie theater, when it is dark, or when they are too excited because of the sympathetic stimulation, the pupil block occurs. The aqueous cannot move from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber. The outflow is blocked, and the pressure rises acutely. okay but whenever the pupil comes back to the normal size these patients the pressure automatically reduces and these patients they can be normal again so to identify these patients we should do gonioscopy gonioscopy is the exam examination of angle of anterior chamber okay so when on examination you find that this patient is having narrow angles you know these patients are at risk of developing future attacks so what is the treatment here the management is gonioscopy and what is the treatment the treatment to prevent the future attacks is to go for laser iridotomy in both eyes laser iridotomy in both eyes is the treatment to prevent the future attacks and of course the management of the acute angle closure glaucoma also you should know better theek hai bachche right okay let's move on to the next question a 68 year old hypertensive patient again fundus image based question with clinical history an elderly patient elderly patient who is hypertensive presents with very nice dr khan by nd yag laser you will do laser iridotomy very nice rajpat i am happy that you guys are able to connect your knowledge with whatever kind of question comes a 68 year old hypertensive patient presents with sudden loss of vision and the following fundus image is seen so hypertensive patient sudden loss of vision fundus photo beta fundus photo classic fundus photo what are you seeing in a fundus photo optic nerve margins are okay but you see hemorrhages what are you noticing in the blood vessels you are noticing all the blood vessels are very congested and what is there all over the fundus you are seeing multiple retinal hemorrhages in all the four quadrants multiple retinal hemorrhages in all the four quadrants of the fundus like a tomato splash appearance so this is the fundus image of central retinal vein occlusion all of you should be able to identify the fundus image of central retinal vein occlusion and central retinal artery occlusion theek hai beta these two fundus images are very simple you must have seen number of times so you should remember so this patient is fun diagnosis you have made what is the question this patient is at risk of developing all of the following complications except except beta so vitreous hemorrhage yes vitreous hemorrhage can be a complication because central retinal vein occlusion patient can develop neovascularization and they can 
have vitreous hemorrhage. Neovascular glaucoma, yes, that is true. Remember, because of the 100-day glaucoma, there can be iris neovascularization or rubiosis iridis, which can lead to neovascular glaucoma. Macular edema, yes, remember, vein occlusions, diabetic retinopathy, uveitis, all of these conditions, you can develop cystoid macular edema. Right? Complicated cataract. So, central retinal vein occlusion is not a cause of complicated cataract. So, this is my answer. This is odd one out here. Fine? Yeah, so D is the choice, beta. Macular edema can occur in central retinal vein occlusion, uh, uh, Dr. Nazar. It can occur. Okay? Right? Okay. So, just giving you a thought. Central retinal vein occlusion, do not forget the fundus image. 100 day glaucoma, vitreous hemorrhage, macular edema, care the complications. Complicated cataract. Complicated cataract is seen in certain conditions, for example, uveitis, if you remember, pathological myopia or high myopia, and retinitis pigmentosa. So these are the causes of complicated cataract. Okay. Right? So, yeah, there was no stucking of the video, beta. I had to just go for a few seconds and I am back and I hope all of you are able to see me and hear me. Okay? Uh, no, Dr. Jackson, Christmas tree cataract is not complicated cataract. Christmas tree cataract is seen in myotonic dystrophy. Complicated cataract is the one where you notice polychromatic luster and breadcrumb appearance. Dr. Jackson, Gana Gake Sunana hai ya Esi Sunana hai? Right. Okay. Okay, guys. Let's be serious. Let's be serious and come on to the next question. A patient with mature senile cataract is planned for phaco emulsification. A patient with mature senile cataract is planned for phaco emulsification. What is the correct sequence of steps for the surgery? What is the correct sequence of steps for the surgery? Okay. So, moving on to the... So, what we do in the phaco emulsification beta, that is the cataract surgery. You will make an incision. That is a type of extra capsular technique. So, you have to identify the capsule. Now, in mature senile cataract, because the whole lens is white, so you have to do staining of the capsule so that you can identify it. Okay, so you will do capsular staining, then you will do capsulotomy, then you will break the lens into small pieces, and then you will implant the lens. So, my dear friends, only some of you are making the right choice. See, you have to do the sequence. It is not that all the steps are mentioned. But in which choice, the sequence of the steps is right. So how can you do nuclear fragmentation before capsulotomy, beta? When the capsule is not open, nucleus ko, how can we break the nucleus? So choice C is not the right answer. Don't jump. This is little time consuming. Question. Okay, yes, now you are getting it right. Choice A is the answer. So choice A is the answer. Yes, yes, yes. So in choice A and B, incision is not mentioned, but the rest of the steps in the choice A, they are in the correct sequence. You will stain the capsule by, as I told you, trepan blue dye. Once you have stained, then you will Beta incision wala step usme missing hai. But ye nahi likha na question is not asking that what is what are the all the steps? What are the sequence, correct sequence of the step? No, staining is not done for all emulsification. Mature cataract. So where you cannot see the lens because of the mature cataract. In some you can do capsulotomy without capsular staining also. Okay, so just to make you revise, remember, so when 
when the cataract is very mature beta see here the cataract is so dense that the lens is almost white so in those cases to identify the capsule so this is your white lens and this is the capsule so to identify the capsule you have to stain it with trypan blue or methylene blue dye so that you can do the capsulotomy so this is the step of the capsulotomy theek hai bachche right so first you will do capsulotomy then you will break the nucleus into smaller pieces by taking it out and then once the cataract is removed you will implant the lens theek hai so sometimes this kind of question examiner can put cataract surgery steps beta you should know because cataract surgery step based questions they can come right okay so this is the even this image they can ask they can ask you which dye is used for the capsule so here in this question that was the purpose of putting this question so that you know that this is an important topic for you so you will stain the capsule you will do capsulotomy then the phaco emulsification probe you will break the lens you will remove the lens and you will implant the lens new lens theek hai right okay beta moving on to the next question so this is your refraction question again in most of the past exams a question based upon the refraction has been coming so don't miss that topic so let's do that Dr Bhargav if you remember the different steps of the phaco emulsification uh, if i just quickly write it down here of course you will make a corneal incision that is the first step okay then if needed capsular staining is not done in all the cases but if needed for example in mature cataract you will do capsular staining so that you can see the capsule under the microscope so once you have done the capsular staining you will do capsulotomy which is also called capsulorexis so once you have done capsulotomy then the next step is actually what is called as hydrodissection you will remove you will separate the nucleus from rest of the capsular bag then you do nuclear fragmentation break the nucleus into small pieces and then you do aspiration of this nucleus and cortical matter and in the last you will implant intraocular lens so all these steps of the phaco emulsification you should do flax is the latest in which you use femtosecond laser for major steps there is an insta um, post also of mine based upon the cataract surgery you can guys can see through that so phaco is also best flax is the latest technology theek hai beta right perfect okay bachche let's move on to the next question the refraction based question an 8 year old girl underwent retinoscopy under atropin at 1 meter working distance what is the glass prescription in this case so in all these questions in which retinoscopy finding is given and you have to uh, mark the glass prescription what are the steps beta what are the steps you should first of all note that what is the working distance okay you should note whether cycloplegia was used or not and then we will do that okay so how do we do that so in this case what they have told this is the retinoscopy finding the working distance is 1 meter so you will subtract make a correction of minus 1 diopter for working distance atropin was used as the cycloplegia so you will again make 1 diopter correction for the atropin okay so in the vertical meridian in the vertical meridian plus 5 came on retinoscopy so you have to subtract minus 1 minus 1 from here in horizontal meridian plus 4 came so you have to subtract minus 1 minus 1 here so your corrected cross will become as plus 3 sorry your corrected cross will become plus 3 and plus 2 so your glass prescription will be based upon this theek okay? hai so 
the smaller spherical uh, the smaller power the smaller power will be given as a sphere so plus 2 is smaller so plus 2 diopter sphere will be given so what will be the residual left at 90 degree plus 1 will be the residual left which will be given at as a cylinder okay now now, yes, beta, you have to choose the minus or wo smaller uh, wo hona values. Ka. Now, cylinder kaha place karna hai? 90 degree to where it is required. Okay. Cylinder is to be placed at an axis 90 degree to where it is required. So, the cylinder is required at 90 degree. It will be placed at 180 degree. Perfect. ठीक है? Again, बेटा, इसमें कोई confusion नहीं है, कोई complicated concept नहीं है. Give smaller power as a sphere. Then you notice what is the residual which will be given as a cylinder. Then you see where is cylinder required. And you place the cylinder at 90 degree to that axis. ठीक है, बच्चे? Okay? Right? So, Again, in these questions, do not go to the choices first. Pehle apna answer nikaal lo. It's a kind of a numerical for you. Pehle apna answer nikaal lo. Fir dekho ki wo choice kaun si hai. That choice is C. Thikke beta? Again, in these cases, do not look at all the choices. You will get confused. Pehle apna answer nikaal lo. First, do your calculation and then do that. 90% of the time, the distance is 1 meter beta. Because uh, then you subtract minus 1 diopter. The working distance ka jo correction hai, that is reciprocal of the working distance. Utna diopter aapne nikalna hai. Okay? If it is 2 third meter, if the working distance is 2 third meter, the 1.5 will be the correction done. Okay? Work, if the working distance is 2 third meter, minus 1.5 diopter will be corrected. Because the working distance ka correction hai, that is reciprocal of the working distance. But most of the time to keep the calculation simple, they give working distance as 1 meter. Dr. Command. Okay. Dr. 56. Pehle dekho working distance kitna hai. Myopia mein kya hoga beta? Myopia mein similar hi hoga na? Myopia mein wo minus minus add ho jayega. Right? So just to kind of explain to you. Uh, I have to, if I have a space here. Okay. Just to explain you a myopic refractive uh, retinoscopy finding. Let's, let's see the example that this is the retinoscopy finding in myopia. Okay. So again at 1 meter. But no cyclotrichia. No cycloplegia. Okay. So then minus 1, minus 1. Ye ban jayega minus 3. Ye ban jayega minus 4. Okay. So this will be your refracted cross. So in this case, minus 3 diopter will be given as a sphere. Okay. Minus 1 diopter will be given as a cylinder. And in this case, it will be placed at 90 degrees. Okay. Okay. Right. So, minus 3 diopter sphere, minus 1 diopter cylindrical at 90 degree. Peter, atropin hi ho 90% of the time, Dr. Shay. Because they don't want to complicate your, uh, this thing, especially for your FMG exam. Okay. Right. Okay. And sometimes they can also ask you, they can also ask you what type of the refractive error is this? What is the type of the refractive error yaha pe beta? The type of the refractive, beta tropicamide is uh, the most weak cycloplegic. So here the type of the refractive error, another type of the question which they can ask you based upon sometimes on this kind of this, the type of refractive error. So here in this case, it is compound hypermetropic stigmatism. 
remember the different type of the astigmatisms so this is compound hypermetropic astigmatism right in case the question is based upon that okay let's move on to the next topic bachche let's move on to the next topic okay so here a clinical case scenario question let's see a farmer comes to iopd farmer with painful decrease of vision and redness so there is painful red eye he gives a history of injury to the eye with a twig while working in the fields 3 days back which of the following is likely to be seen on slit lamp in this case okay so a clinical book picture case is there a farmer which is having painful decrease of vision injury of eye with a twig injury with a vegetative matter so most likely this patient is having some kind of corneal ulcer among the choices given and which kind of corneal ulcer when it is a vegetative matter we suspect fungal corneal ulcer right we suspect fungal corneal ulcer going by the choices dendritic ulcer is seen in viral rosette cataract can be seen in blunt trauma but that will not cause pain and redness okay the rosette cataract geographic ulcer is again seen in viral so ulcer with satellite lesion is the one which is feature of fungal corneal ulcer so that is my answer here as all of you have told me so in the last one or two exam we did not get a question of fungal ulcer but it still remains an important topic beta and it's a very <laughs> so that's a very easy one i would say if it comes then you have to do that so natamycin yes antifungal drops they can be given if they show you the slit lamp image or just to revise that how the satellite lesions they look like this is how they look like beta okay so this is a dry raised ulcer with feathery margins because the infiltrates are not well defined and then you can see these multiple small satellite lesions around the main ulcer which is your fungal corneal ulcer ठीक है बच्चे राइट ओके गाइस मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ मैकेनिक सफर्ड एन आई इंजरी व्हाइल यूजिंग हैमर एंड चिजल सो लेट मी टेल यू ट्रॉमा हैज बीन नाउ एन फेवरेट टॉपिक विद द एग्जामिनर ट्रॉमा इन सम वे और अदर अ मैकेनिक सफर्ड एन आई इंजरी यूजिंग हैमर एंड चिजल Two years later, he started developing progressive decrease in vision. What is the likely cause for decreased vision? Now, when you talk about hammer and chisel, beta, when you talk about hammer and chisel, it means it is some metallic eye injury, injury with some metallic foreign body. ठीक है? अब ये जो metallic foreign body है, hammer and chisel किससे बने होते हैं? They are made up of iron. so it means they are talking about some iron foreign body okay now coming to the choices chalcosis chalcosis is related to copper deposition in the eye sidrosis bulbi is related to the iron deposition in the eye fleischer ring is an iron ring but which is seen in keratoconus and the rust ring in the cornea is seen in cases of superficial iron foreign body in the cornea okay now among the choices here because there is decrease vision now so decrease vision will be there when the iron is getting deposited in the retinal cells also in the retinal layer also and causing retinal degeneration so that happens in the cases of sidrosis bulbi so here they are asking you about sidrosis bulbi theek hai bachche right and other choices also we have discussed sidrosis bulbi is a condition in which because of the retained intraocular foreign body retained matlab ki wo aankh ke andar hi reh gaya there was an foreign body which was not removed retained intraocular foreign body 
if it is iron then it causes sidrosis bulbi if it is copper then it causes the copper deposition which is called as chalcosis and chalcosis it has same signs as same signs as wilson's disease beta same signs as wilson's disease okay so there will be kf ring there will be sunflower cataract that is what you will see in chalcosis beta right yes do not do mri where you suspect metallic foreign bodies so when metallic foreign bodies are suspected mri is contraindicated theek hai bachche absolutely right dr jackson those are the questions based upon the superficial coronary corneal foreign bodies you will remove them with the 26 kg needle so as i told you the questions related to trauma please go through them because that can help you in the exam theek hai right moving on to the next question beta identify the lesions seen in a 50 year old lady suffering from rheumatoid arthritis for last 15 years so nearly a spot diagnosis question with the history given okay so i always tell you where there is rheumatoid arthritis in the eye think about some scleral inflammation okay so in the eye rheumatoid arthritis scleral inflammation is one which you should keep in mind okay so now they have also given you an image to assist you so in this image what you are looking at you can see there is a uveal tissue which is shining through the thinned out sclera the sclera is thinned out so it is scleromalacia perforans the name to this condition is given is scleromalacia perforans in which scleral thinning is there because of the necrotizing scleritis because of necrotizing scleritis and this is typically associated with long standing rheumatoid arthritis okay so what you are seeing here are not iris nodules iris nodules will be on the surface of the iris either in the body or in the pupil margin so they are feature of granulomatous uveitis remember coips and busaca nodules episcleritis is just a superficial inflammation there is no necrotizing element in episcleritis right anterior staphyloma is a complication of perforated corneal ulcer so that is a complication or sequelae of perforated corneal ulcer so what you are seeing here is scleromalacia perforans theek hai beta any time question related to long standing rheumatoid arthritis see whether there is a choice of scleromalacia perforans here the image is also given to help you that is your answer uh dr rajput hla b27 will cause anterior uveitis for example ankylosing spondylitis or reiters or psoriasis so that is anterior uveitis theek hai acanthamoeba ulcer beta clinically it will be a ring ulcer ring ulcer okay and they will always give you some history that this is a contact lens user having a painful red eye decreased vision ring ulcer theek hai beta okay moving on to the next question moving on to the next question important topic another one a 15 month old boy is brought by parents who noticed a white reflex in the left eye fundus examination following findings are seen what is the likely diagnosis classical book picture age group 15 month old one and a half year old leukocoria on fundus examination you are seeing a cauliflower like mass with calcification so this is typical retinoblastoma 
retinoblastoma. Okay, so with this clinical picture, you should not make it a wrong diagnosis, but our right answer is retinoblastoma, which is the most common intraocular malignancy in children. Rhabdomyosarcoma is the most common orbital malignancy, intraorbital malignancy, primary intraorbital malignancy. Choroidal melanoma is the most common intraocular tumor in adults. Okay, right? So, intraocular malignancy, 4-5 points sirf yaad rakhne hai, beta, in the oncology jo hai, retinoblastoma of course in detail. Choroidal melanoma is the most common intraocular malignancy in adults. Okay, and of course, everything about retinoblastoma, whether it is RB1 gene, whether it is Knudsen to hit hypothesis, first presentation of the, the most common presentation of the retinoblastoma, which is leukocoria, second most common is strabismus, the age group, the classical histopathological feature, which is your flexner. Winter Steiner Rosette. Okay, so all these things you should remember. The treatment, if it is a small tumor, which is like you know, from group A to D, then your treatment is focal therapy plus minus chemotherapy. If it is a large tumor, which is group E, that is more than 50% of the globe is involved, then you do E nucleation. Okay. The investigation of the choice is MRI. That is the best. You can also do CT, but that is the investigation of the choice. So everything about retinoblastoma is important, Peta. Starting from the clinical features, histopathology, treatment, investigation of choice, chemotherapy, VEC regime. When Christine etaposide carboplatin VEC regime for the chemotherapy is the treatment. So that you must know and learn and revise before the exam. Okay. Yes, most common spread is by optic nerve invasion. Moving to the next question, Beta. A patient's ptosis is improved by applying ice packs to the eye. Another very commonly asked question, expected question. Ptosis. Okay, so here there is a ptosis which is improved by applying ice packs. So sometimes the examiner does not give you the elaborate statement, but they tell you the clinching key point. So which ptosis you know? No, but it is carboplatin. Okay, so which ptosis you know will improve by applying the ice packs? There's only one. Myasthenia gravis. Okay. Third nerve palsy, complicated ptosis, mechanical ptosis, they do not improve that. So, myasthenia gravis is a condition. Myasthenia gravis is a condition in which there is less acetylcholine availability at the neuromuscular junction. When you apply ice packs, so that's called ice pack test. Okay, so when you apply ice pack, as you see in this image, this patient was having ptosis, it improves. Similarly, if you do tensilon injection, or even when you give neostigmine, the ptosis improves because you are making more acetylcholine available at the neuromuscular junction. So, improvement in the ptosis with these tests tells you that the, the condition is myasthenia gravis. Okay. And at the same time, the typical features of the ptosis in the myasthenia gravis, it is variable. It becomes more in the evening or with the fatigue because when the muscle fatigue sets in, the ptosis becomes more. So, it, is, it can be even intermittent. So, these are seen in only in myasthenia gravis. Okay? So, ye sara kuch beta agar question mein mentioned ho, to diagnosis is myasthenia gravis. Okay?
ओके मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन बेटा फंडस एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ अ पेशेंट विद अनकंट्रोल्ड हाइपरटेंशन सो व्हाट द पेशेंट इज हैविंग अनकंट्रोल्ड हाइपरटेंशन शो डिस्क एडिमा कॉटन वूल स्पॉट्स एंड रेटिनल हेमरेजेस okay so lately the examiner has shifted his focus from diabetic retinopathy to hypertensive retinopathy so i don't want you to go to the exam without reading about hypertensive retinopathy okay so there are different grades of the hypertensive retinopathy based upon the keith wagner classification have a quick revision of that it is very easy so here what is the findings there is disc edema cotton wool spot and retinal hemorrhages okay so they come in the category of grade 4 hypertensive retinopathy patients theek hai right ha ek bar very nice dr choudhary a simple concept hypertensive retinopathy mein ek bar disc edema aa gaya grade is 4 baki kuch likha hai ya nahi likha hai nahi matter karta if there is disc edema there is uh yeah that video will remain available i'm sure okay so this is how the grade 4 hypertensive retinopathy will look like so here just i will take the opportunity to show you the different signs also because sometimes the question can based be based as identify this sign theek okay? hai different signs kaise identify karne hai fundus image pe beta please have uh, <clears throat> some concentration here when you see something like this fluffy white ठीक है ये जो फ्लफी व्हाइट सी लीजन होती हैं लाइक अ कॉटन वूल सो दिस इज योर कॉटन वूल स्पॉट्स बेटा ओके फंडस में इस तरह से फ्लफी व्हाइट कॉटन इश आ रहे हो तो कॉटन वूल स्पॉट्स में और इफ इन द फंडस यू सी दीज डिस्क्रीट डिस्क्रीट मींस वेल डिफाइंड अगेन येलो इश वाइट डिपॉजिट सो दीज आर योर हार्ड एक्सुडेट बेटा विच आर द लिपिड डिपॉजिट दीज आर योर हार्ड एक्सुडेट ठीक है इस तरह के डॉट हेमरेजेस हो रेडिश डॉट्स हैं तो डॉट हेमरेज है ठीक है और ऐसा स्प्रेड आउट हेमरेज विच इज स्प्रेड आउट लाइक अ फ्लेम दैट इज योर फ्लेम शेप्ड हेमरेज ठीक है सो दिस इज अगेन बिकॉज दीज साइंस दे कैन बी देयर इन डायबिटिक रेटिनोपैथी ऑल्सो सो इफ यू सी दीज साइन ऑन द फंडस एंड द एग्जामिनर आस्क यू टू आइडेंटिफाई द साइन देन यू शुड बी एबल टू कि कॉटन वूल स्पॉट कैसे दिखता है हाउ हार्ड एक्सुडेट लुक्स लाइक हाउ फ्लेम शेप्ड हेमरेज लुक्स लाइक हाउ अ डॉट और ब्लॉट हेमरेज लुक्स लाइक ओके सो दैट ऑल्सो यू शुड नो ठीक है बच्चे right and yes about the classification the keith wagner classification divides into four grades the grade one is when because in hypertensive retinopathy you have to identify uh, remember that the changes they are in the arterioles hypertension jo hai wo body mein arterioles ki thickening kar deti hai thickening of the arteriolar wall because of that the lumen becomes attenuated that is what happens so the grade one is when there is only mild arteriolar attenuation okay ab arteries agar thick ho jayengi to wo niche ki veins ko compress karengi right so there will be compression which is called as av nipping so grade one is arteriolar attenuation grade two is av nipping and then there are three signs because of these arteriolar venous changes which you see in hypertensive retinopathy just names are enough beta yes salman bhai gun ke sath aa rahe hain bonnet <laughs> bonnet gun ke bonnet ko uthaya hua hai theek hai absolutely right i love it dr gp salman bhai ki gun ka bonnet <clears throat> ye yaad rakh lo theek hai salman bhai ki gun ka bonnet hypertensive mein blood pressure badh jayega na salman bhai ke naam se so they are the signs which you will see in hypertensive retinopathy so grade 3 may grade 2 changes plus hemorrhages cotton wool spots hard exudates are there or grade 4 may grade 3 ki changes ke sath disc edema are there theek hai but a signs ki na description ko bhul jao wo too much ho jayega just remember the signs 
all these are signs which you see because of the pressure of the arterioles on the veins okay okay right perfect okay so coming on to the next question a baby is brought by the parents with watering from the eyes photophobia large looking eyeballs on examination the following image is seen again classical book picture of who can tell me about the answer the diagnosis of question 21 child a baby watering from the eyes photophobia large looking eyeballs classical spot diagnosis from the image yes buphthalmos or congenital glaucoma meta okay so classical triad of lacrimation blepharospasm and photophobia bpl large sized eyeball large sized cornea cornea can be clear or hazy okay so all these features all these signs they are seen in congenital glaucoma or buphthalmos okay so please do not confuse it with megalocornea because in megalocornea only cornea will be large the eyeball will be normal nld obstruction there can be watering but no change in the size of the eyeball or cornea okay so this is not only the corneal opacity the haziness is because of the edema because of the high eye pressure okay so again the image diagnosis of congenital glaucoma the triad of the symptoms you should know it very easy question if it comes okay right very nice okay so moving on to the next question moving on to the next question pulsatile proptosis can be seen in let's see how do you answer this beta it's a sort of one liner pulsatile proptosis is seen in so proptosis you mean protrusion of the eyeball pulsatile proptosis is seen in yes that's the treatment now pulsatile proptosis is a feature of here in orbital varices let's go to the different choices in orbital varices beta you see intermittent proptosis okay please remember in varices you see intermittent proptosis which becomes more on valsalva or on coughing or on sneezing okay thyroid of thalmopathy is the most common cause of proptosis okay it is the keratico cavernous fistula yes you guys are right where you see pulsatile proptosis okay orbital metastasis can be another cause of proptosis but you don't see pulsatile proptosis in this here the fistula is between cavernous sinus and internal or external carotid artery because it is such a high pressure thing because of the blood flow there will be pulsations there there can there will be bruit okay so please remember this kind of one liner intermittent proptosis which increases on belsalva or on coughing sneezing is seen in orbital varices pulsatile proptosis is seen in keratico cavernous fistula among these thyroid of thalmopathy is the most common cause of proptosis in adults in adults beta ha ent se bhi solve ho sakta hai okay right another cause of pulsatile proptosis can be conditions like meningocele or encephaloceles they can also cause pulsatile proptosis so sometime examiner orbit related questions you can expect in the exam okay right okay guys moving on to the next question which of the following can be seen on examination of a patient having what elevated liver enzymes ataxia tremors okay so they have given you a set of 
द साइंस एलिवेटेड लिवर एंजाइम मतलब हेपेटिक इन्वॉल्वमेंट है एटेक्सिया ट्रेमर्स मीन्स न्यूरोलॉजिकल इन्वॉल्वमेंट है ठीक है आई साइंस सो वट इज वन कंडीशन इन विच बोथ हेपेटिक एंड न्यूरोलॉजिकल इन्वॉल्वमेंट इज देयर एंड यू सी आई साइंस दैट इज योर विल्सन डिजीज ठीक है तो एग्जाम में बस बेटा दिमाग खुला रखना है नाइंटी परसेंट एटलीस्ट एटी टू नाइंटी परसेंट थिंग्स विल बी द सेम विच यू हैव रेड बट दे कैन कम इन द एग्जाम इन अ डिफरेंट वे द की इज टू रिकलेक्ट योर इंफॉर्मेशन दिमाग के अंदर ना बहुत कुछ अब आपके स्टोर हो गया है द ऑल द फैक्ट ऑल द कंसेप्ट आर देयर इन योर ब्रेन how much you utilize that in your on your exam day will be you know how many questions you get right so simple simple cheeze mat bhulna try to correlate i have seen you know students they say ye to humne padha hi nahi tha aisa ho hi nahi sakta ki aapne na padha ho same set of thing can be asked in a different way the wilson disease question can be asked in a different way okay so here of course you all of you have identified fine kf ring nahi beta question dekh ke to dar hi nahi lagna chahiye na usme se dhoondo ki aap aapko kya yaad aa raha hai jaise yaad aa jaye usko recollect karke answer mark kar over analysis nahi karna hai okay over wo nahi karna hai ki bar bar answers change karte raho give yourself a logic that why you are marking this answer 80% of the time your logic is going to be right beta theek hai ab yahan pe baki cheeze bhi revise kar lete hain what is wheeze ring wheeze ring is a ring which is seen in retina due to the posterior vitreous detachment okay normally with age the vitreous gets detached from retina which is called pvd or posterior vitreous detachment so wheeze ring is seen in that condition okay फ्लैशर रिंग ऑलरेडी वी नो इट इज सीन इन करेटोकोनस सो जस्ट टू लेट यू नो करेटोकोनस के बाकी साइंस भी याद रखना बेटा रिजूटी साइन मुंसन साइन ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ करेटोकोनस ओके वॉसियस रिंग इज सीन इन ब्लंट ट्रॉक ओके एंड ऑफकोर्स के एफ रिंग इज सीन इन डिसीज न क्वेश्चन कैन बी के एफ रिंग किस वजह से होती है कॉपर डेपोजिशन की वजह से होती है ओके किस तरह से दिखती है it looks like this this is your kf ring it's a based upon what kind of picture you get it can be yellowish brownish greenish ring which you will see in the periphery okay so it's the copper deposit in desmet membrane right does all patients of wilson disease will have kf ring no 90% of patients with neurological involvement with neurological involvement will have kf ring 50% of patients with hepatic because wilson's disease mein sabko neurological or hepatic nahi hota hai so it is not 100% that all the patients will have kf ring okay then kf ring is not pathognomonic of wilson disease because it can be seen in chalcosis also it can be seen in few other liver diseases also so it is not pathognomonic okay so all these things you should remember about kf ring okay right yes the treatment of keratoconus also dip, that depends upon the stage of keratoconus that you should remember but okay right time to move forward time to move forward here coming to your next question following a car accident a young man presents with a black eye double vision so as you were telling trauma truck accident car accident aayenge exam mein so following a road side accident a young man presents with a black eye and double vision ct scan of the orbit shows a tear drop sign right ct sign of the orbit shows a tear drop sign so black eye double vision tear drop sign so what what kind of fracture will lead to these kind of the symptoms so every one of you is absolutely right blow out fracture of orbital floor 
ठीक है बिकॉज और बाइटल फ्लॉर वेन देर इज अ फ्रैक्चर ऑफ और बाइटल फ्लॉर द कंटेंट ऑफ द ऑर्बिट दे ड्रॉप इन टू द मेगजिलरी साइनस विच प्रोड्यूस द क्लासिकल टीयर ड्रॉप सन सो दिस विल नॉट हैपन इफ इट इज अ मीडियल फ्रैक्चर ओके एंड द फ्लोर फ्रैक्चर इज द मोस्ट कॉमन द फ्लोर इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली इन्वॉल्व वॉल ऑफ द ऑर्बिट इन द ब्लो आउट फ्रैक्चर एंड हाउ द क्लिनिकली द पेशेंट विल हैव यहाँ पे उसकी दोनों आंखों में आ गया है वैसे बट फ्रैक्चर इसी आंख में है बिकॉज एज यू कैन सी दिस आई इज more symptomatic so patient will have a uh, kind of like you know black eye periorbital ecchymosis subconjunctival hemorrhage you see this patient is not able to move the eye upward there will be diplopia so this will be the clinical picture and that will be the ct sign and the answer will be the blow out fracture of the orbital floor theek hai beta So, ये क्वेश्चन भी एकदम हलवा टाइप क्वेश्चन है यू नो इट देयर यस ओके राइट सो मूविंग ऑन टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द सेशन व्हाट इज द डायग्नोसिस फ्रॉम द गिवन फंडस इमेज बेटा सो लुक एट द फंडस इमेज लुक एट द फंडस इमेज सो एक्चुअली जस्ट मोस्टली द ऑप्टिक नर्व हैज बीन शोन इन दिस सो वट इज योर डायग्नोसिस वट इज योर डायग्नोसिस so what do you see here so here what you are noticing beta you are noticing optic nerve margins are fine but see a large optic cup okay so large optic cup the cup disc ratio is nearly 0.7 in this case okay so what is the condition in which cup enlarges neuro retinal rim becomes thin that is your that is your primary open angle glaucoma so among the choices so glaucoma glucomatous optic atrophy will cause increased cup disc ratio okay so among these choices it is primary open angle glaucoma in papilledema and in papillitis there will be disc edema beta remember early in the session i have shown you how disc edema disc hyperemia will look like okay in retro bulbar neuritis disc appears normal on fundus examination because it's the part of the nerve which is behind the eyeball which is inflamed so in this picture where the cup is enlarged it is glucomatous optic atrophy glucomatous optic atrophy ठीक है बच्चे सो हियर इट इज ओपन एंगल ग्लकोमा सेम कैन हैपन इन एंगल क्लोजर ग्लकोमा आल्सो बट द चॉइस इज टू बी डन ठीक है बच्चा सो इफ समथिंग लाइक दिस कम्स अगेन यू शुड बी नोइंग जस्ट लुक एट द इमेज एंड ट्राई टू आइडेंटिफाई व्हाट इज रॉन्ग ओवर देयर ओके सो आई होप दिस सेशन हैज हेल्प्ड यू टू हैव एन आईडिया व्हाट काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन टू एक्सपेक्ट इन द एग्जाम व्हाट काइंड ऑफ topics to expect in the exam i'm not saying that this question is going to come but i'm definitely saying that these topics are going to come in your exam beta theek hai these topics are going to come dr 56 are you asking about with the rule astigmatism so with the rule astigmatism if you are talking about so normally so this is the same picture so <clears throat> with the rule astigmatism mean normally the vertical meridian the vertical meridian of the cornea is more curved than horizontal meridian okay so that is called with the rule astigmatism okay so that is called with the rule astigmatism okay so if if the curvature of the cornea that is more myopic power is there at 90 degree meridian okay so if more curvature uh, the power is there in 90 degree meridian then that will be with the rule astigmatism okay 
ओके एंड अगेंस्ट द रूल मीन्स दैट हॉरिजोंटल मेरिडियन इज मोर देन द वर्टिकल इन द रेटिनोस्कोपी सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज द वन एस्टिक मैटिजम सो हेयर यू कैन सी द वर्टिकल मेरिडियन इज मोर कर्ड सो दिस इज विद द रूल when there is more minus at 90 degree theek hai beta more minus at 90 degree is with the rule astigmatism and more minus at the horizontal is against the rule astigmatism kyunki because nature has made vertical meridian more curved so that is with the rule of the nature more minus at 90 with the rule more minus at 180 against the rule okay marcus gun pupil is a relative afferent pupillary defect dr ansan which is seen in diseases of optic nerve and some diseases of retina for example optic neuritis anterior ischemic optic neuropathy toxic optic neuropathy central retinal artery occlusion retinal detachment in those cases the pupil dilates when the torch light is shown on the abnormal eye okay when the torch light is shown on the normal eye pupil constrict but when it is shown on the abnormal eye it dilates theek hai beta lasers dr rajput there are like you know different lasers i can post uh, you i have um, i can post it on my insta also because that will become a long topic for retina lasers we can use frequency doubled nd yag laser we can use argon laser for iridotomy and for capsulotomy we used nd yag laser and for cataract we use femtosecond laser for lasik we use um uh, excimer laser so there is a whole list i can share that with you in my telegram group also theek hai okay bachche so once again we have covered most of the topics from this list but i want you to go through these topics before your exam theek hai and please now it is the time to be arjun of your life okay now please be the arjun of your life aim focus and achieve that is what i want you to do okay i know it is easy said than done but then we have to do it okay there is no alternative to hard work you are just there you are just there keep your aim keep your focus you are going to achieve success theek hai beta Mm, Doctor, fifty-six preceptal cellulitis means when the inflammation is there, just in the area, which is you can say anterior to the orbital septum. Okay, in those cases, in preceptal cellulitis, there will be lid swelling, pain, but no decrease in vision and no proptosis. Okay, PDF definitely share hoga. So keep studying, keep your focus. all the very best from me from the team of the mist and thank you so much for being so interactive for this session <laughs> yes yes exactly okay and i really want that when i talk to you guys after your exam and i talk to the happy faces with lot of smiles for that we have to make sure that we don't lose focus and we just just keep going on ठीक है मेरा तो एक ही गाना है बेटा कि लक्ष्य को हर हाल में पाना है ठीक है ये लक्ष्य है तेरा इसको हर हाल में पाना है अपने दिमाग में यही एक गाना बजाते रहो बस लक्ष्य तो हर हाल में पाना है थैंक यू सो मच बेटा थैंक यू टेक केयर ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट थैंक यू सो मच द पी डी एफ विल बी शेयर and i will be keep posting the useful material on the insta and i will put on the telegram also laser and everything you guys have asked for so please be sure okay take care guys all the very best for your exam yes dr bhargav all my best wishes are for you ab ki baar 220 part 
<laughs> thank you so much take care thank you so much keep working hard keep smiling prepare with a smile on your face okay may god bless you all of you thank you so much <laughs>